Brothers and sisters, always remember that setting priorities is a, is a part of our sunnah. It is a part of the methodology of how a Muslim prioritizes his life. You're always going to be thinking about the most important things in your life before you get to other trivial matters. And the most important thing for a Muslim is not just their deen. After you have deen, after you've become Muslim, the most important thing that you need to have is good manners and etiquettes. This is why Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran in Surah Furqan, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا now listen to these two verses and how they, uh, how they relate to one another. The first thing Allah Azza wa Jal says, He calls the servant Ibadul Rahman. He doesn't call them a Muslim. But He says that you are the servant that I have mercy upon. I am the merciful one, so I shower that Rahman and that mercy upon you. Why? Because after you've established yourself as being Muslim, the first thing that you care about is being a good one. So what is Allah Azza wa Jal addresses? الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا The person that walks on the lands, that walks on the earth without any pride. In other words, they have some humility in the way that they walk. You know, subhanAllah, when you look at this image that Allah paints for you, it's very interesting to know that Allah talks about how you walk before He talks about how you speak. وَإِذَا خَاطَبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا The next thing after Allah addresses the way you carry or you conduct yourself, the next thing Allah mentions is your tongue and how you use it. And specifically mentions that if somebody were to come and scrutinize you or ridicule you or make fun of you, the least you should do is that you should respond with some type of kindness. Now here is where the problem begins. The problem begins is that in many of our youth communities, this first aspect is missing. And if a youth doesn't know the value of being a good Muslim, and doesn't know the value of being proud of who they are, because the reality is very simple, guys. You ever find that you meet some youth when they see uh, you know, somebody who's not wearing hijab, or they see somebody smoking or drinking, they say, you know, I would do the same thing, but I'm Muslim. I would wear the same, I would love to wear the same thing, but you know, I'm Muslim, so I have to wear hijab. It almost sounds as though the youth, they're not really proud of being Muslim. And they've lost that whole sense or that sweetness in their identity. They're just doing it just simply because they have to or they need to. Now look at what's on the mind of our youth today. They want to drive. That's the first thing they think about. Why do they think about this? The first thing that they want to do is drive because the first thing that they want is they want to have control over their own decisions. They want to do what they want without anybody telling them or guiding them or giving them a steering road of where they should go and what they should do. All of this falls under one concept and that is the concept of consumerism. We live in a time now, brothers and sisters, where when a youth, if he has an iPhone 4 and he wants to upgrade, so he goes into the Apple store and he gets an iPhone 5 and he walks out, and how does he feel? He's like, Allahu Akbar, you know, I, I feel, you know, I feel something different. He feels as though he's become more superior, he's been elevated in some way, all because of a gadget. And then I ask you, brothers and sisters, those of you who have children, especially those of you who have children between the ages of maybe 8, 9, or 10, what's the first thing your child asked you for at that age? Did they ask you for a mushaf? Did they ask you for a siwak? Did they ask you for a hijab? Or did they ask you for a PS2? Did they ask you for a toy or a gadget? Did they ask you for a cell phone? And that clearly gives you an indication of where the mindset of our youth today are.